Good afternoon, IT Channel. I'm Mark Sun, the host of the Channel Chat Podcast Show. And today I have the pleasure of Mirza the Executive Director of the Marketing Practice in the studio. Afternoon. Thank you for having me. How are we doing? Good. Sun's out. Makes a change, but yeah, sun's out. It's been a nice day. Good, 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 good. So thanks for coming in, Mirza. So one of the reasons that I wanted to get you into the studio was because I do tend to take the piss out of marketing people quite a lot. (laughs) I call them the the colouring in department, but I I wanted to get a bit more of a view about what's happening in the IT channel around marketing and some of the initiatives and uh, programmes they're doing. But I want to go back first and take you right back to the start because how did you get into the wonderful world of marketing? It started with college and, yeah, passion for marketing, passion to understand why people buy and sales um, came out came into the tech sector publisher side. So this was when print magazines were a thing. So working in the software development press, working in media relating to open systems and databases, so quite technical stuff. And it really came from there. We were working on a lot of media campaigns for vendors. We were working on a lot of recruitment campaigns, events, all kinds of stuff related to the IT technical audience. Um, Fast forward, we saw a gap, we saw a need. There was seen to be a disconnect between how IT buyers were actually doing things versus how marketing was actually trying to talk to them. So we gave it a punt back in 1997 to set up a marketing agency, which was very much around audiences and buyers rather than marketing and vendors. And yeah, the rest is history. Uh, uh, tell me how you, right, so, but giving it a punt, there must have been, must have been a bit more thought process now because you, you obviously were successful in your career anyway. So what gave you the inclination to think, do you know what, I can start a company and do so? Because that's quite brave. No, it was... Uh, all think, mad. All mad, yeah, whichever way you look at it. Um, so it was myself and James Fuchs, uh, the other co-founder of Kingpin. We were both working in the same environment, getting the same sort of frustrations. Um, sat down, as you do, over a few beers, over a few weeks, months, hatching a plan, thinking about how to solve world peace. Um, and we got to a conclusion that actually... We're 25 years old. We've got an idea. We don't want to, you know, sit here 10 years from now regretting not giving it a go. Um, We think there's a market there. We think there's a pain there. So at that moment in time, it seemed like a good idea to set up a business, form a business plan, you know, go to relevant banks and set up bank accounts, do all the stuff you're supposed to do and really just, you know, have a crack at launching an agency, which is serving the tech buyers and tech audiences. And did you have any experience of, you mentioned there, going to get a bank account, having a business plan? You know, it's quite a scary thing for a lot of people to do. It was. um, It was challenging. We were walking into, you know, high street banks where you're the business bank manager is, I don't know, 18 years old and doesn't really know anything. So you're sitting there quiet. We're not asking for loans. We're not asking for funding. We just need to open a bank account and we're getting bureaucracy. So that was a bit of a, the strange one, trying to figure out or navigate registration systems and VAT and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, we got there. It was a minefield. And, you know, to anybody to, that's thinking about doing it or it's been through it, it's never been easy, but what a ride. It's always a ride. You're always learning and it's not always successful. You, I mean, I think we set up in 97. No, I don't think. I know we did set up in 97. Um, so that was dot-com boom and bust. That was... What, 2008 recessions, Y2K, COVID, all the things that we've all been through. So lots of rides, lots of ups and downs, lots of new experiences, and you just, you kind of roll with them, right? You, you, you've you got to. Um, but, I, you know, I'll never undo it. i never do, you know, sit back and think, oh, why did I do this? No regrets on that one. So how did you become, uh, why, why Kingpin as well? Where was that <laughs> brand come from? <laughs> why Kingpin? Um the official answer is Kingpin. It's the central cog in all kinds of mechanisms, so connecting marketing and channels and audiences. <laughs> the truthful answer um, is we sat down and we spent a lot of hours trying to figure out names, and the best we could come up with sounded like contact lens companies, so clear solutions <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. So it got to the point that we kind of looked at Company's House, looked at companies' names for sale, and I think we saw Kingpin Financial Services and it was like, Kingpin, that works. Go with it. Um, yeah, it wasn't as scientific as that. But. And recently, I saw that, obviously, you got bought by another company. Obviously, that must have been quite difficult because I'm thinking you've worked for yourself for 25 years 
And then suddenly, am I right thinking you then had a boss? I do have a boss, yeah. yeah so how, how did that go after after 25 years of only having to answer yourself or your partner? Um, well, how's it going, I suppose? Yeah. I'm still, you know, where are we now? 16 months in? Um, good, to be fair, I think. Back in 2021, last January, February, um, the marketing practice approached us uh, or approached me with a, a conversation. I wasn't looking. I wasn't out to sell as such. The conversations at that time were with the founder. Um, and then that was the initial conversations. And then from there, the CEO, who is my boss. Um, and it was sort of like everything that was being said, the way that it was being approached, the conversations, everything aligned. It made absolutely 100% sense. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. Did I have reservations of having a boss? Not around to the individual, but more having a boss. It's mm. really weird. But no, it's, and I've, you know, I voiced them quite openly saying, I'm concerned about this. I'm not sure what I'd be like as an employee and all that sort of stuff. But to be fair, you know, fast forward a year and a half, true to his word, not trying to teach anybody how to suck eggs, just trying to basically support where needed. Um, so it's, yeah, it's been good. Most content I see online um, appears to be scheduled half the time. <laughs> and sometimes I think the, the, the replies are handled by chatbots or AI. Is traditional marketing now at a risk of being automated and potentially going out of existence? Is it at a risk? Yes. Um, will it be? No, I don't think so. I think as much as tech and data and tools are in place to ease marketing or help measure marketing, um, I think marketers are still a a breed in themselves. There is a very defined skill set there. They need to, not, and you know, to your earlier point regarding the colouring department, now marketing is very much a pipeline revenue associated function. It's very much front and centre in that equation now. So I think where all the tools and data and tech are coming into it is actually assisting that and enabling people to measure that. Um, and if done well, it can really solve a lot of problems. I think Part of the problems that you may be seeing and do exist, on, you know, I'm not going to name names, but you can see it definitely that silver bullet platforms and tech are being sold left, right and centre into a lot of vendors, you know, world peace is being cured and, you know, I've signed up for this dashboard, therefore my, my job is done. That's not the case. Yeah. Really. Um, there is a, a lot of challenges, I suppose, at the moment where what we're seeing in in our world is that marketing in a way is structuring itself around seller's journeys or yeah seller's journeys marketing journeys or tactic journeys but nobody's actually linking it to buyer journeys so and i think that's swinging back a little bit but still probably a long way to go you mentioned um around you know marketing or lead generation you can get a return on investment it can be a bit more defined i mentioned i said this to you uh, at lunch i always find again Without taking the piss out of marketing, I see, I see them as the colouring in department. Yep. I see a lot of marketing that can't be return on investment. I said to you before, you know, the events, um, webinars, etc. It's quite difficult to um, get a definite return on investment. But you challenged me now. You said it's not. So how, what does good marketing look like? How can we know that we're actually getting a return on, on the investment if it's, if it's not tangible and it is about brand? I suppose there's two questions in there, isn't there? There's the, the measurement side and then there's well, good marketing, I think. Understanding who's buying your products and solutions is critical. Um, and when it comes to business to business, it's buying committees. It's not buying, it's not one individual that buys anything. It's, you know, I don't know, seven years ago, eight years ago, whenever it was, at the time we were about 30 strong in terms of a business, we rolled out Salesforce. In that decision making process, there was four or five people in, wow. in a company of that size. So you then put that into a big bank or whatever, there's probably 10, 15, 20, 30. So starting from the beginning, it's making sure you understand who your buying team are, what's important to them. So what does the, I don't know, the DevOps person versus the procurement person versus the finance person versus the C-suite care about, understanding all of that, understand the kind of ponds that they're all kind of fishing in, what sort of content they like, what sort of messages we need to do, and serving accordingly. From that point, you can start measuring all of this. So if you can see somebody from Big Bank X attending a webinar and then somebody else from Big Bank X downloading content, start putting that together. Start 
seeing it and play it. Don't focus on the most senior job title just for the hell of it. Start putting it all together as a journey. Mm. 